I, I would a little bit. I think that the leadership, that some of the leadership that we've seen over the past month or so has really argued that the speculative fervor is back in and that investors are suggesting that maybe the Fed goes to the sidelines. Let's go speculate again. It's 2018, 2019 all over again. Let's go have a good time. I think that's a mistake. I think if the Fed steps aside, it's going to be because the economy is an awful lot weaker than people think. Not that we're in some kind of Goldilocks environment. You know, there definitely has been a sort of echo boom in some of the more speculative areas of the market. But to me, it looks like a lot of stocks down 80 percent have doubled off the down 80 percent level. At the same time, mm -hmm. you know, Apple has been one of the leadership stocks, certainly quality, even if it's expensive. And you know, things like industrials working, too. So I, there's a cyclical message that at least is being attempted to be conveyed by the market. Is that something you think is, uh, is a bit of a trap or is that OK? Well, Mike, I think that, that we're in some kind of a late cycle environment here. This is not the beginning mm -hmm. of anything. We're in a late cycle environment. And, and I think that um, there's only two certainties as we look out towards the second half of this year into early next year. And certainty number one is the Fed's going to be tightening. Certainty number two, perhaps even more important, is that profits are going to be decelerating. So the question for investors is what works in that environment, right? There's a million different issues that are hair on fire. I know I shouldn't be saying that given my, my <laughs> paint, but, but, but there's a million issues, but there's only two certainties. And I think the question is what works in that environment? The answer is actually defensive sectors, not growth, not cyclicals, but the one that people tend to ignore, which is defensive sectors. And those uh, that you prefer right now would be just the traditional defensive sectors like healthcare, staples, things like that? Exactly. Mike, the most boring stuff you could think of, you know, foods, beverages, household products, healthcare, utility stocks. I mean, it's pretty boring stuff. You were ahead of the discourse, let's say, a couple of years ago in saying that inflation was going to become an issue. It clearly did. It clearly was not transitory in the way that Fed officials and many economists we're saying it might be. Uh, do you do you think now, though, that we're on the other side of that and and that at least there's some downside momentum in inflation uh, or we're not? Well, well, thank you for, for pointing that out. I've had my share of pause, too, but but I'll take this one. And and um, I think, look, I think the Fed is historically behind inflation. If you look at the real Fed funds rate, meaning Fed funds minus inflation, no matter what measure of inflation you want to use, you're going to find that real Fed funds rate is still historically negative. That argues that inflation will be more stubborn. Is it peaking out? Perhaps. But is it just going to fade away? That, uh, the real Fed funds rate argues it's not, and that it's going to be a more persistent and stubborn issue than people think. So I think where people may have it wrong in thinking that this little mathematical recession that we've had in the first and second quarter this year is the recession. Personally, I think the recession is going to be next year. The real recession is going to be next year. And that's because the Fed is likely to over tighten at the same time profits are decelerating. Right. I mean, without a doubt, the most bullish scenario is, guess what? We just had the recession. Um, right. and, you know, that's <laughs> right. certainly an arguable point right now. But but having had one or just noticing one is usually a bullish spot for the market. So you can't say we're there yet. Now, if the Fed remains behind and you therefore expect the Fed, as officials have been saying, to remain pretty vigilant and just focused on getting rates higher and restraining demand and, and perhaps muting uh, the strength of the labor market. Can we not also interpret the market as saying that's fine, but the economy is now perhaps sturdy enough in the short term to absorb that? In other words, the soft landing scenario, it seemed pretty much a long shot a little while ago, maybe a little bit less of a long shot now. So that you think is, is wrong headed as well? Yeah, so I think, Mike, I think what that misses is that's kind of the traditional soft landing. And what that misses is that we are in a historically tight labor market. And so, you know, some people have said we can't be in a wage and price spiral because wages aren't, aren't rising as fast as prices. So if prices go, off, that, that go up, that chokes off demand. Well, what's happening with a very tight labor market is that workers can now argue for more raises to try and regain their purchasing power. So instead of a wage and price spiral, maybe we're in a price and wage spiral, maybe chicken and egg, right? But, but whatever, it, it argues that this persistent inflation backdrop is going to stay, that the soft landing works when you have a lot of excess labor 
you have a lot of slack in the economy, and that slack exerts disinflationary forces on the economy. I just don't think we're there right now.